is going on guys and today we're going over the top five easiest gods to master in smite now i had already done a top five hardest gods to master uh which included gods like tear uler uh Kukulin was an honorable mention gods like that this is going to be easiest gods to master now kind of like i re-uttered in the hardest gods video this isn't the easiest gods to play this isn't the easiest gods for beginners this isn't this is just easiest gods to fully master that once you know you select them and you go in and you're like you know what i want to really grasp this character and i want to just be able to completely master them and get the hang of them it's the easiest to do so starting with number five and that is athena and the reason athena is number five is because she's a support so that automatically automatically makes her tankier and more sustainable she has a global ultimate which makes her extremely viable anybody with a global alt especially one that can teleport to a teammate and just help them that automatically makes them you know more viable so you combine that with a pretty self-explanatory combo that's why she's number five the combination of her kit not being confusing having a global alt being a guardian uh, which automatically makes it easier in my opinion just because you don't die as quickly uh, which helps newer people so here is athena's abilities you'll read them real quick her their combo essentially is you're going to dash forward which is her one you're going to place down your three which is your damaging ability and then you're going to taunt them into your three now you can you can combo this up in different ways you could taunt first and then lay down your shield wall uh to catch them off guards because a lot of time when you go to combo up you know and you do this they see that coming and they'll beads it especially when you're charging up your dash that dash is it's not you're not gonna hide that it, it's worse than odin shield because at least with odin shield if you're behind a wall and you pop it maybe they won't hear it but everybody's gonna hear that everybody knows it, especially because a lot of athenas will just do this uh that's one thing is when you keep charging it up and canceling they never know when you're gonna do it and then all of a sudden you taunt you just dash out of nowhere so it, it's super annoying but it is kind of a good strategy so dash shield taunt is the full combo and the reason you want to shield first is because you get double the damage you get initial damage from hitting them with your shield and then you get secondary damage when it blows up so first damage second damage and the second damage always does more so you want to try to ensure that you get that and the only way to ensure that you get that is to put your stun down first or not your stun your shield down first now if you want to know what athena's alt is and what i meant by it's so good uh let's go ahead and switch teams real quick i think that's how you do it yeah so raw's on my team now this is her alt let's say that raw bot calls out help left lane and you just see enemies going to left and you're like gosh oh, well i don't know why raw would be in left lane anyway but you get the point um and he needs help he's helped boom that's why Athena is so good that global ult to go anywhere and then as soon as you go in let's say there's a team fight here you got three of your teammates and you got a full five as soon as you land in boom taunt them into that that allows your team to set them up not only that you do some damage as well and you can always dash out if need be now whenever you is it whenever you dash whenever you use ability let me look okay so after you use an ability no matter what your next basic attack is ranged that's a good way to master her as well if they're running away um and you use your dash forward um like so and they're running they're running boom you can throw that extra basic attack which always helps um my phone just went off i'm gonna turn that off real quick and so that's part of mastering her is knowing when to use that range basic uh you know handy and if you pair it like if you're doing athena jungle and you pair it with a polynomicon i'll show you real quick uh just because you pair it with something like a polynomicon let's say you're athena jungle you dash forward you get that basic that counts as an ability so next time you use that poly boom you're gonna get that ranged and the poly proc for that as well so overall to sum up athena the reason she's number five on easiest gods to master is because you're a support so your main job is to set up the team right and she has the ultimate way to do that you have a full three ability combo where you can dash in place your shield and taunt them into it not only that it's a phenomenal beads burner you have it up every 15 seconds when you got no cooldown on self-explanatory combo easy combo you play her for a couple of games you'll get the hang of it and you'll you'll be able to master her after not too long 
On to number four. And number four is everyone's favorite, Poseidon. Poseidon is a god that I would be willing to say like 80% of people probably know. And a lot of people probably know Athena as well. But the reason Poseidon is number four on this list is... he It's pretty self-explanatory. It's the Kraken-Whirlpool combo. If you're playing Poseidon correctly, you want to try to hit all of your Krakens. Every single time you miss a Kraken, and, and when I say miss, even if you hit him on the outer skirts. If you didn't know, this is what Poseidon's ult is. You just summon a big Kraken. You see that inner circle? You want to try to get them in there, because if you get them in that inner circle, it's going to deal more damage. If they're on the outer circle like this, it's not going to deal as much damage. So you want to always try to get them in the center of it. A good way to do that is to cripple them. How do you do that? With your Whirlpool. You're going to allow them to not get anywhere. And you just spawn that right on top of it. That's why Poseidon's number four on easiest to master. Because as long as you can do that, you've pretty much mastered Poseidon. There's not a whole lot other to him. Here is all of his abilities if you want to check it out. His one is a line that's going to be essentially um actually not your main your main form of lane clear is gonna be your whirlpool as well. Um, but you can also clear with your one. So you can get extra, extra, extra clear if you lay down your three. And then hit the wave with the one as well. So you're going to get the damage off from the one. And then your whirlpool is going to be taken. You can basically clear full wave at like level. Almost level two. Because once you hit the whirlpool uh, tidal wave combo. It'll pretty much clear every single minion. Um, not quite. But you get the point of that. Um, and his two is is a buff. And it's a really good buff. Because not only um, does it give you speed. You can see the speed here. Anywhere from 10 to 30%. It also gives you extra damage. And what I mean by that is you can see. Right now, I'm swinging only one basic attack, right? Once I pop that two, I'm swinging three basic attacks. So I got three chances to hit people. I can hit three enemies if they're right there. Um, so you get a movement speed buff, and you get uh, extra damage right there, which can go well with Polynomicon or something like that. It used to go really well with uh, Gem Talus, uh, Gem of Isolation, Fatalis combo, but Fatalis is no longer in the game. Um, but yeah, the main reason he's, he's easy to master is because it's just the Whirlpool Kraken. Whirlpool Kraken, you want to be doing that all game. The more Krakens you hit, the better chance you have to win. I know that's that's kind of self-explanatory. You're like, well, obviously, if anyone hits their ult, it's going to have a better chance to win. But the Kraken is the most identifiable ult in the game. It's one of the most hurting early game ult. Like, as soon as you hit five, you want to scout for your victim because it hurts, especially early game. You Whirlpool them down, Kraken, and throw your one on them. They're going to be dead late game. No one is surviving that late game if you hit all of that. And then on top of that, once you hit your 4-3-1 combo, if they're not dead, they're going to be stuck in the whirlpool for a little bit longer. Um, so say I just use Kraken and everything. You just pop my two and just smack them a little bit when they're in the whirlpool. That's really it. Poseidon is safe. You got your whirlpool and you pair it with like a gem of isolation. They're never getting out. As long as you're hitting your Krakens, you're mastered Poseidon. Whirlpool, Kraken, Whirlpool, Kraken. That's really there all is to it. Throw your one in there for some extra damage, if need be, and decide it's mastered. On to number three. And number three is Shock. Now, the reason Shock is number three, uh, it's for a couple reasons. One, his passive is super, super useful, and it can go together really well with his abilities. Number two, almost every single one of his abilities can chain together in some form of fashion, and they're not really hard to remember or get down. So once you play him four or five, six, seven games, whatever, and you get, you understand what his abilities can do. Once you understand what his abilities can do, you've essentially mastered him. That's why he's number three. Um, you just got to play him to get used to everything and combo the passive into it. Uh, his abilities are this, if you didn't know. His one is going to throw down a giant axe. It's going to do a bunch of damage. It hurts a lot early game, especially. His two is going to be a big AoE. Uh, it's not going to do a whole lot. But it is going to give you um, the protections, or sorry, gaining protections for each enemy hit, which is really good. Um, but you can also pair this with your one. And I'll show you what I mean right now. So this is his one. This is what it looks like. He just throws his axe. Now, if I have my axe deployed, you can see it's deployed right there. That's what his two looks like. His two is just a big AoE swing. That's all it is. However, you can combo your 1-2 together. If I keep my axe out and it's still deployed, let's say I hit him. It deploys, it stays out there for a little bit. And if I activate my 2 again, I'm going to teleport to that axe wherever it was. So you can use this offensively um, to initiate. You know, if, if you're starting a team fight, you can throw your axe and then initiate by dashing in. 
pop your alt, whatever that may be. Um, but it's a really good way. You can also use it as an escape. Let's say you just had a team fight and you killed everyone and now it's a 4v1. You're by yourself. Toss your axe over the wall. Yeah. Teleport over wall. Really good. I would not, and I repeat, I would not ever, ever use this if you're just running. And the reason is because when you do that, the time it takes for you to throw your axe, by the time you do that and hit two, you would have ended up in the same spot if you were to just keep running. So this is what I mean. If I'm running and running and I throw this, and then, so, well, <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. Take two. Um, let's say I'm running, I'm running, I throw my axe teleport what did i move i moved from like what right here to right here it just wasn't worth it just because of the delay it takes so i would really only use that getaway strategy if you're running and you got to go over a wall because then it's really good or if you're escaping an odin cage something like that it's really useful now his three is a heal so it's going to heal you um but it's going to create a little aoe around you and if an enemy were to step inside that AoE, it's going to slow them anywhere from 20 to 40% and reduce their attack speed anywhere from 5 to 25%. So this is what it looks like. Boom. Easy. It's all it is. But you see that little AoE that's around you, that little rain puddle? If an enemy steps in there, they get reduced attack speed and reduced movement speed. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, you just pop it. And I go into him. Now he's slowed. He get reduced attack speed. Now he doesn't. That's simple. That's all it is. Really easy. Now, you can also combo your one with this as well. If you remember when I had my two activated, or when I activated the one, two, I teleported. Well, if I throw my one out and I activate my three, I'll generate a rain puddle below me and where my axe was at. So anyone that's around me is getting slowed and has reduced attack speed, but anybody around the axe that I deployed is also getting reduced movement speed and reduced attack speed. Now, your ultimate, this is what it looks like. You go up, you become CC immune, it silences enemies and stuff like that. It's going to silence them for three seconds and do a fairly amount of damage. Now, you can also combo this together. A full combo, as it would look like with shock, would be, you know, let's say you want to dash in. Do something like that, and then you can slow them down from right here. They're not getting away. You pair it with a frostbound hammer or something like that. No way in hell. Now, Shock's passive, let's get into that real quick. Um, what I meant by that, you see how I have five glowing things under my passive? That just means my next ability is free. So right now you'll see that once I use this ability, no mana will be consumed. Now mana will be consumed because I didn't have my passive up. All it takes is five basic attacks. One, two, three, four, five. Next ability I use is free. It's really, really good. Um, so we already went over the combo where you can throw your axe, dash in, and slow them. There also is a nice combo where if you want to initiate like hard, hard, you could also throw your axe over because um, if you use your ultimate, right? And hold on. Oh, no, they changed this. Shocks, charges, lightning axe, blast, lightning, knocking up, dealing all images. Okay, so they changed this. So it's even easier. Before you had to have your um, axe out to get additional benefits from storm call but now you don't even need to do that so basically what a full combo could look like you could throw your axe slow them throw your axe teleport um but if you wanted to go full all-in combo team fights happening you're ready to go in throw your axe teleport in alt them and then just slow anyone down so they're gonna be silenced and then once they get unsilenced they're gonna be stunned from your slow so you throw your axe, you spin in, you alt, you slow. You could even throw your axe, spin, slow, and then alt just to make it easier. Because literally at that point, all you're hitting is one, two, three, four. That's how easy it is. You'll see what I mean. One, two, three, four. That's really it. That's why Shock is number three to master. When you combine his passive with one of the most self-explanatory kits that's just easy to chain together pretty easy and shocks shocks a decent warrior he's not going to get you anywhere crazy in ranks probably and definitely not professionals but when you're playing casuals and you're just trying to master a god shock's going to be a bully shock could even bully people in mid lane i've been bullied by a shock in mid lane playing isis and it was one of the most demoralizing things of my life on to number two number two is weimer that is right well amir but i love to call him weimer everyone's 
I guess everyone's favorite support, especially Europeans. Man, EU loves them some Weimar. The reason Amir's number three is, or number two, sorry, is for about three reasons. Maybe that's why I was going for that. One, he's free. No matter what, if you have the basic game, you get Amir so you can master him whenever you want, right? Number two, he's a very, very high health support with a lot of CC. Automatically makes you a lot harder to kill. Number three, his kit is super easy and his kit's really good as well. The only thing that makes Amir kind of not good literally the only thing is he has no mobility no movement speed no getaway no jump no dash none of that but he's a giant frost man that just slows everyone down and stuns him so he doesn't need any movement speed we're gonna look at his kit in case you didn't know what it was his one is just an ice wall similar to anara from paladins uh, her little wall if you play that lasts anywhere from two to six seconds his two is a line ability it's going to be your primary sense uh, source of clear it also slows for 35 percent for four seconds his three is a freeze that'll stun anywhere from 1.25 to 2.25 seconds and his alt is deadly um you can see the base damage is 1100 at max rank it is terrifying it, it will hurt no matter what if you're building full tank amir it's going to hurt um, and it also slows for 30%, 30 while they're inside of the little uh, radius. And I'll show you what it looks like. It's just this. So they'll be slowed, slowed, slowed. And then that's going to hurt. You can also pre-detonate it to do lesser damage if you want. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. Um, just to, if in case they're going to escape your little area and you want to get confirmed damage off. Now... The reason Amir is number two on the Easiest Gods to Master is because his kit is so self-explanatory. You've If you've played Smite... I can guarantee you, you've at least played Amir, or you've seen Amir, you already know it. This is his one, really easy. This can be used to troll your teammates, uh, if you want to be a dick, and just block them off, but it can also be used to just sentence anyone to death. Let's say you're chasing enemies down, right, you and your Ra are chasing an Athena, I don't know, right? And she goes to start up her dash, and she's about to dash through. You stop. Nope, she's not dashing through. Now, she's going to be forced to dash into that wall. You can just freeze them, hit your two, and but they're going to be dead. Uh, by the time you get your freeze off, a mere freeze is one of the most <gasps> just like heart-stopping abilities in the game. Because you know you're screwed. Because you know if he gets his freeze off, he's more than likely getting his two off. So not only is this going to do a bunch of damage to you... That combo from Amir, you're going to be slowed because he just has built-in slows. And if he's uh, hitting you, he's going to slow you more. But you're stunned and you're taking damage. So if that Rawbot wants to get an easy snipe, he's got it. If Thoth wants to get an easy snipe, he's got it. Yanu's snipe, he's got it. Agni ultimate, he's got it. You're just a sitting duck. And there's not much you can do when you see Amir running at you other than run away. Unless you can confirm that you can time his uh, breath really easy and jump it or something like that but that's not the easiest thing to do um and that's it there's i don't really know how to explain amir other than three two that it, three two you just gotta find an opponent preferably a mage or an assassin or someone who can't run away and just freeze them that's it and then let your team do the work and if you can you know get that off as well It'll be really, really good. And if they do run away, you just freeze them. Or just wall them. And then you always got this to just... Oh, watch. 382 base damage at level 1. No items built. Not even starter items. 382. It's insane. Between that, this... I mean, you can see the damage I'm doing. I shouldn't be able to do that kind of damage at level 5 with no items built. But because I'm a mirror, I can. Between that combo, that crazy alt, being able to wall off... That's it. You literally just 3-2, three, 3-2. Two, three, two. If, you, if you only use your 3 and your 2 throughout the game as a mirror, you're going to be doing some good for your team. That's why he's number 2 on the easiest gods to master. Number 1 might surprise a lot of people, uh, but I'll explain my reasoning. And number 1 is Apuchi, baby. It's Apuash is the number 1, in my opinion, easiest gods to master. And you're thinking, huh? Well, for one, Apuash gets no love. He's always... B or C tier and everything except for like joust and assault. No one, oh, Bosch just doesn't get love. And to me, he fits right into this video. So you know what? We're giving Alpwash love. He is, in my opinion, the number one easiest gods to master. 
And the main reason, there's a couple reasons, but the main one is his combo. It's, I would say, the easiest combo to do. And you're using that combo literally throughout the entire game. The only thing you're going to be doing is op wash from zero seconds into the game to an hour into the game is one three two. You're gonna be standing away as far as you humanly can from everybody because you just you're just a waddling and you got no movement speed. You're just a sitting duck. And you got an enemy here. Throw that out, throw that out. Boom. One three two. That's it. Over and over and over and over and over and over until the game is done. Uh, we'll look at his abilities and I'll sh show you what I'm talking about. He focuses on just corpses and dead things. So, his first ability you saw, he spawns uh, two undead surges. Raises up two decaying corpses from the underworld. Surge forward, exploding on anything they touch. When they reach max distance or when all posh, reactivates undead surge. Dealing damage and slowing the target's hit. So you can see the damage it does. It also slows for up to 40% for 3 seconds. Um, and the corpses that you drop depend on what level you are. So right now I'm only dropping 2. Or only dropping 1. But uh, if I go ahead and level this up to level 3. You'll see that I dropped 2. And I'll show you the damage that I mean. So boom. Did 99 damage there. I can go ahead and activate this again. Uh, if I want. Or no I can't. Sorry. But I can go ahead and pick up these corpses. And this also adds into him being easy to master. Um. Come late game, uh, when I'm, you know, burning mana like crazy, because Opwash is not mana friendly at all. Um, but come late game, like late game, like level 15, 20, you can literally just throw corpses up against a wall and consume mana. I want you to look at my mana real quick. When I go pick up this corpse, boom, mana back. Boom, mana back. You get health and mana back. It's it's essentially, late game Opwash essentially has a permanent meditation whenever he wants. Now, obviously, you can't be in combat because if you're sitting there throwing corpses up against the wall and, and just doing this, um, you know, you're going to be a sitting duck. And notice my cooldown. Seven seconds, six, jumps to four, jumps to one. Whenever you pick up a corpse, you get your reduced cooldown. So you can literally late game just sit here and throw your corpses up against the wall to get mana back and stuff like that. Now, you can see that... By doing that, I'm essentially just decreasing my mana, um, but that's because we're level 6. If I was level 20, I would essentially have unlimited mana and health. That's how crazy that gets late game. His 2, or sorry, his 3 is going to be the second thing you cast. You just throw out an additional uh, little thing. Looks like this. That's all it is. Nothing too crazy. Now, when you do that, it awakens the corpses and applies Mesa to the targets in an area that falls to the ground. A lot of unnecessary stuff here. I'm trying to get to the goods. Basically, it just deals tick damage. Target takes damage. Here we go. Target takes damage every second after the duration. Targets take additional damage and are stunned if they were healed by an ability during the initial duration. So, you can use this separately. What I mean by that is if I wanted to, I could just throw this on Odin. Like so. Um, and it'll do some tick damage, as you can see. Now, if he were to use a heal at any point, like if Chongo were to heal him or, or Hell were to heal him... While that damage was going off, he'd be stunned as soon as the tick damage stopped, which is a really cool feature. So you can use that uh, kind of to your advantage there. That's That would be the hardest thing to master about Opwash, is knowing when to use your three in situations um, like that. Because it, it isn't a lot that that happens. Generally, you're just comboing together. And your two, what it does is causes an explosion. You could use it with no corpses like this. Um, but you can see it's not going to do any damage. But the more corpses you have, uh, the more explosions it causes. So you can see here I have uh, one down already. I'll throw these two. Throw him. And now watch the damage he does. Boom. All those individual corpses explode and deal extra damage. So the more corpses you have, the more damage you can do. You could sit there in lane and just throw stuff out. And just continually throw stuff out and stack as many corpses as you want. And then you could catch someone off guard walking in the middle of that and just boom, just annihilate them. Your ultimate, it's pretty weak, honestly. Um, it does okay damage later game, but it's really used as um, peeling or crowd control. If you're getting chased down, uh, just cast that. That's all it does. And each time those little spirits hit someone, it does damage, but it's not a lot. It's really, I would just use that all and I would save it when you're getting caught out and you know that you might not make it out alive use that um 
as protection and you can stand in it and it won't do any damage to you but obviously enemies will have to leave unless they want to stand in the center of it um but if they want to do that this is what you can do if they want to be cheeky and stand in the middle of your ult with you you have one option you're not going to be able to run away as upwash so you have to fight if you cast your ult and they want to stick in and fight just throw corpses on top of you so you know you cast that and they're still fighting just throw everything down on top of you pick some up if you can and just use your ground as a little like aoe trap that just do not come near me <laughs> that's that's your only way to live as upwash upwash is not an easy god to uh survive with he gets caught out really easy he might not be the easiest god to play but in terms of mastering it's simple it's it's literally you could put a, a four-year-old kid on smite and say just don't move stand under the tower hit your one hit your three and hit your two and they'll be able to at least do something that's why he's the easiest god to master because it's literally there's only one thing you do from beginning to end and that's one three two one three two alt whenever you can and you get that permanent late game meditation essentially that's why op watch in my opinion is the easiest god to master if you guys enjoyed this whole list be sure to drop a like and hit subscribe for more content like this and if you have your own list or uh what you guys think are the hardest gods to master let me know in the comment section and until next time peace